can we deal with the UN official who suggested Australia's got to get out of coal, got to get, got to get out of coal, dump it urgently, got to go in about 10 years' time? Uh, here in part is what Graham Lloyd had to say today. Boris Johnson has made uh, ending coal one of the deliverables from the conference. Mm. This is a, a UN ambition for the world and uh, developed countries have until the end of this decade basically to, uh, to close down coal completely. All right, that's Graham Lloyd from The Australian. Matt, got to get out of coal in 10 years, mate. You ready? The UN's told us we have to. Well, I picked a great day uh, to announce this uh, remarkable uh, uh, night on us. Uh, today, uh, prices, uh, coal prices, Carson down Joel's way, uh, hit record levels. Uh, they do have the best in New South Wales. I'll give Joel that crown. We've got the best coking coal here in Queensland, but uh, coal prices at record levels. There's never been stronger demand for our high-quality high coal, and that demand looks like being there for decades to come, not just over the next decade. Indeed, just west of me, they're, they're, they're into the coal seam of the Adani Carmichael mine. They about a month ago, hit the coal seam. In a few months' time, they'll be exporting that coal. They expect that mine to go for 30, 40, possibly longer years. Uh, uh, and so they're spending billions there and putting their money where their mouth is, knowing that there's going to be strong demand for our high-quality coal for some time. So I don't think we fought so hard to get that mine up just to go to Glasgow and sign it all away. This is why we should not sign up to this UN-backed radical net-zero agenda because it's easy to say net zero by 2050, but you've got to know what's the steps getting there. You know, when JFK said he was going to go to the moon, he didn't say, oh, we're going to put a man on the moon by the end of the century. He did it over the next 10 years. So what exactly are the, do the net zero uh, radical activists want over the next 10 years? That's what they've got to be up front and tell us. The UN here, they want to shut down our coal industry, and I don't think the Australian people want to lose those that jobs and those incomes uh, and that record revenue we're getting at the moment. Well, of course, to invoke President Kennedy, Joel, we don't do these things because they are easy, but because they are hard. So uh, are you ready for the hard choices that are get rid of coal, get out of it when it comes to power in the next 10 years? Uh, it was an extraordinary speech, Paul, for, for many reasons. First of all, it was a thinly veiled attack on our Prime Minister on his own turf for not signing up to zero net emissions. He praised each of the Australian states for doing so, and therefore by omission was highly critical of the Prime Minister. But I really wish the advisor to the UN had done a little bit more research and homework on the Australian economy. Uh, first of all, we, we will need our younger coal-fired generators to stay in the system uh, for much more than a decade because we simply can't... We've been so successful putting renewables in the system, we can't get any more in while at the same time keeping the grid state. But if we don't keep those coal generators alive and well. And of course, no less than the Energy Security Board recently told us that we're going to have to start paying them for the capacity they deliver to keep that thing uh, stable. So we should be signing up to net zero emissions, but we should be fiercely determined to do it our way. And what does that in, mean though? In doing, it our, well, in doing it our way, we need to allow our coal generators to run the length of their physical lives. We need to get more gas peakers into the system in the meantime. And we've got to have a stronger embrace, as strong as an embrace as we did of renewables for lower emissions technology, including carbon storage, uh, capture and storage. Uh, last, uh, well, not last, but the last point I will make tonight, because I don't have more time, is to agree with Matt. Um, the lights are going to go off in Asia uh, if we precipitously stop exporting to them a relatively, relatively Clean and efficient coal. Now, that would be a terrible mistake both for our economy and, of course, for our customers in Asia. Now, Rowan, uh, because, of course, the UN says we uh, do it, we have to do it, but can I just get a little a little taste from you about um, the Greens and their uh, mega super uh, uh, profits tax going after the tycoons around every corner? Uh, and, of course, Labor will not at all be not at all be dragged by any extremes of the Greens. There's no way that no, will happen. Won't. Well, uh, Paul, the first thing to say would be that uh, if, uh, if the UN gets its way and we get out of coal, we won't have any companies to be taxed. So the Greens will defeat their own agenda. Um, it's not coal we need to get out of, it's the UN we need to get out of. And uh, I'd, I'd do it sooner than 10 years. The UN is nothing but trouble for us. We finance it. 
Uh, and as uh, both Joel and Matt have said, the UN doesn't understand the Australian economy, uh, and it's just fanciful nonsense to suggest that we should get out of coal. But as uh, Graham Lloyd politely said earlier, but I won't say it politely, Paul, uh, the only reason this has come up is so that Boris Johnson can get his jollies. This is what it's all about. Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, is shacked up and now married uh, this green, woke uh, Sheila. <laughs> and uh, she's convinced him this this is going to be your legacy, Boris, because you've stuffed up pretty much everything else. Um, and so he's gone out of his way. He set up this COP26 to be a huge success. It's not. It's going to be FLOC26. As people are realising, China has said we're not interested in cutting emissions and so have plenty of other countries. So he knows that he's not going to get... Uh, get the net zero uh, commitments up. So he's looking now for this, oh, let's get Australia out of coal. And uh, the only reason, as I said, he's doing this is so that he's got some kind of success that he can come away from Glasgow with. We should not even be going to Glasgow. Uh, Matt, you should be telling uh, telling uh, Scott Morrison, forget it, don't pack your bags. And I promise you, he should stay here because it will be freezing cold in Glasgow, as it always <laughs> is at every single every climate, climate summit. It's, nice. it's always it colder nice. than it is ever been before. It's and these nice, but I did, I... still sit around going, oh, the world's going to go warm. I mean, seriously, <laughs> don't even go to this thing. It's I, I loved your analysis there, Rowan. I noticed you had a... Um... Uh, an Abbey Road album in the background there. Uh, I, ga I gather you're not a Yoko Ono fan either. He probably <laughs> put up the Beatles. <laughs>